it is a Newton seminar, right? Yes. Yes. So as my little collector of books, I found nice because I have the original Newton book, uh, Principia, right? There is not such a lot version of that, so it's good that you, you, you see it, okay? So I'm for Newton book, okay? which is the translation of, um, of Principia Mathematica, okay? Which is the official trans translation of, uh, of uh, Emilie du Châtelet, which is a French translation, in fact, where he explained what the Principia. So if someone wants to see it, he can, he can come to our set. This is the original one, but it was for Newton. So I would share my screen. So when I would share my screen, it's iOS, so I will not uh, hear you. So if someone go wrong, uh, maybe Christian uh, can, can call me. Um, let me share. Um, Oops. Good, I think it's okay. People hear me, it's okay? Yes? Uh, yes. You see my screen? Yeah, I can be I can begin? Because I will not hear you when I will launch my keynote, okay? So, just to tell you. Okay, so I, uh, I was asked to, to give a talk, so thank you for, for the invitation. Uh, I will talk about matter physics in the early universe. Um, he, I, would, I have changed a little bit my title uh, because between you asked me to give a talk and, and, and now there was a new references here which appear, which is linked with EEV dark matter, but which go in more details about the, the evolution. Sorry, I, I go back. Go in more details about the evolution of uh, of the temperature in the universe in, in generic frameworks of infection. So I'll just go back now to Zoom to be sure. You hear me? Yes? It was okay? Yes. Okay, so I continue. Just to check that I don't talk uh, in the void. So it's based on several work that we made recently, uh, mainly with uh, Keith Olive, Emilian Dudas, Matthias Pierre, which is here, I saw him. Uh, Lucien Arti also, I saw you are here. And uh, um, I will try to, to show you, um, to discuss about the film paradigm, but what we call more the ultraviolet film paradigm. And mainly the main message will be that to show you that um, if you want to deal with dark matter in early universe or anything in early universe, you need to be careful how to treat uh, many is the reading and the evolution of the temperature in the early universe. So very quickly, because I think all of you is specialist of dark matter and know uh, very well uh, the problematic of dark matter. So a little self-promotion, as we say, about the, the review we made uh, three years ago already about uh, the summary of the WIMP searches. Uh, this is where more or less a uh, typical cross-section you expect from a WIMP, okay, is around 10 to minus 39, 10 to minus 40 GV. What I call WIMP is a particle which couple with a Fermi constant, okay, and we have a mass of around uh, 10 GV, okay, between 10 to 100 GV. So if you just have a cross-section with a Fermi constant and a mass of 50 GV dark matter, you expect a cross-section of around 10 to minus 39 for the direct detection cross-section. And you see that the limit in red here we have a much, much, much below. We are around six to seven order of magnitude below typical wind. Of course, how we avoid it is because we can have model with heavy mediator, you can have model with, uh, with uh, constellation, you can have model with uh, uh, axial dark matter, for instance, or pseudo-scalar dark matter, okay, so you have you have ways to avoid uh, these uh, limits of a direct detection, but it is quite hard, in fact. Um, some example, for instance, to avoid it, if you take some typical model like the Z portal, for instance, Z portal is, a, I would say, the more natural model for a WIMP uh, is excluded, uh, as you see, by, by a lot of the magnitude. This, of course, corresponds to the to half the mass of the Z. Okay, so this is a Z pole. So you clearly see that to have the good right rule carbonance by Planck, you are excluded by a lot of order of magnitude from xenon. LZ will exclude much more. Um, 
you can have a specific coupling, of course, if you have axial, pure axial coupling, it can work, but you have to be in a very specific region of outer space and really specific models. Same for Higgs portal, as you notice it, okay, this is a Higgs ball, uh, the half of the mass of the Higgs is also excluded by the experiments. Maybe a little bit is, is still uh, here, but you should be very fine tuned to, at the same time, respect the radical balance and the deradiation constraints. So one way to avoid it, usually what people do is, uh, is you can evoke, for instance, a Z prime portal. For instance, if you change a very massive Z prime, uh, as a consequence is it is that uh, you can reach a part of quantum space which is not excluded. So this is region which is excluded here. So above four to five TV, I say Z prime, it can be any kind of, um, of portal. Uh, if the mass of the of the particle we change is above three to four TV, you can reach a parameter space which is not excluded by Lux, but will be excluded by the one ton, but not yet excluded by Lux for dark matter mass around TV. Anyway, as you understand quite well, if you increase the dark matter mass and the mass of the mediator, you can more or less have the same uh, kind of thermal abundance, okay, and avoiding limits from the detection because heavy mass of dark matter, of course, is difficult to reach by experiments because you have less dark matter locally. You know, heavy dark matter means less dark matter locally because it's 0 0.3 GV per centimeter cube. If you have less dark matter locally, you have, of course, less signals. So you can escape it, but for that, you need to go to, to model, as you notice it, above electronic scale. So if you go above electronic scale and, and above the uh, interior limit, uh, you, you really need to construct something else, which means what we call a typical WIMP uh, portal or typical WIMP paradigm is quite not valid anymore because if you want to call WIMP uh, dark matter, which is in thermality room in the early universe, you see that you need to go to scale which is much above the quick scale. So you need to add something more than just a Z or a Higgs, okay, or not no portal also have some kind of problematic. So one alternative way, you have a lot of alternative ways, but one which is quite nice, and as he's a natural cell is there, so he knows very well, is to obtain, to obtain the right recarbonance, is what we call the FIMP. So freeze in massive particle, feebly interacting massive particle. Uh, FIMP, as I understood it, is, is mainly the fact that you, you produce dark matter not when you go out of thermal bath, but on the way to reach the thermal bath. So in the way to reach the thermal bath, you begin to decouple from the thermal bath. So this is a little uh, sketch summary of, of the four possibilities to, 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 to exit from the thermal bath. So the classical way is what we call the freeze out, which means you have the dark matter, which is in thermal equilibrium with the thermal bath, okay? And for a typical temperature, which is around the mass of the dark matter, the dark matter does not discuss anymore with the thermal bath, and it's kicked off the thermal bath. Another way, of course, you can go out of thermal bath because the coupling is too small, which is the case of the neutrino. So what we call infrared freeze out, or the neutrino, for instance, is when you freeze out from the thermal bath because the temperature of the bath is not sufficient anymore to produce dark matter. What I call ultraviolet freeze out is when the dark matter, the neutrino, for instance, decouples from the bath because the coupling is uh, not sufficiently strong to keep the thermal equilibrium. So you decouple while being relativistic because it's nothing to do with the mass of, of the particle. Same for the freeze-in. The classical freeze-in, called infrared freeze-in, you produce the dark matter very slowly, and it stops, okay, at a temperature which corresponds to the mass of the dark matter, more or less, because you cannot produce it. So it's quite typical from the infrared freeze-out, in a sense. You, you, uh, you don't reach the thermal equilibrium because the temperature of the bath is not sufficient to produce it. The other possibility is that you kick off, you are kicked from the bath, like the neutrino, like the neutrino because your coupling is too weak to keep the thermal equilibrium in the bath. So ultraviolet freeze-in is quite similar to the neutrino history. Okay, so your, your universe evolves, the cross-section evolves, but the cross-section begins to be quite weak compared to the Hubble constant, and sigma v if you want, begin to be weaker than the Hubble constant before reaching the mass of the dark matter, and so you are kick off the bath uh, because of the small coupling. 
and not because of the large coating. Okay, so wilding is still relatively safe. So this is a little summary. And so I will go a little bit more into details to, to count a brief history of the energy in the early universe. Okay, so as a about so the viable energy is the main object as takes a struggle for existence and the evolution of the world. It's it's especially true in the case of of freeze in. So the little story of universe begin by oh, sorry back the little story of universe begin by of course the inflation and the slow roll phase slow slow roll phase of the inflaton which little, little go down, then reach an oscillation phase, and then disappear to, um, to let the universe being dominated by the thermal bath. So you have a phase where the inflaton, of course, dominate the universe, where the, the slow roll dominate the universe. Then you have a phase of matter domination where the inflaton dominate the universe, uh, but a phase where the photons are not yet in thermal equilibrium, and inside this phase, you have a phase where the photons begin to be uh, thermalized, and then you have a phase where the radiation dominates the universe. Okay, so you have a phase dominated by the slow roll, a phase dominated by the matter domination, which is dominated by the mass, if you want, of the, the energy scale of the inflaton, and then a phase dominated by the radiation, knowing that the radiation is not in thermal equilibrium during all this phase, you have a phase where the photons are not thermal yet. Okay, and this is limited by the oscillation. So you have, as you see, the thermal history is quite complex. And if you want to, to look on freeze in, which means black matter production in the early universe, you need to be careful on how you treat the temperature. Okay, so a basic case. So I begin by no limit model because it's a Newton talk. So I will go from no limit to Newton one by one. So the equivalent of the, of the, of the, okay, of the geocentric model. The basic things that you pose that the inflaton dominated the universe during the time, then the radiation dominated the universe at the time, which corresponds roughly to the width of the inflaton. Okay, this is this is a good approximation of the first thing. You say that what I call reading, in fact, it corresponds to the time, okay, where the inflaton has disappeared. Okay, so and you transform the time in temperature because you suppose that all the energy of the inflaton is. Is, uh, is given if you want it translated to an energy for the radiation, and then you have the temperature will decrease naturally because you are in uh, an uh, adiabatic, not adiabatic, but you're in, uh, you have conservation of entropy. It's important because you will not have conservation of entropy in the universe, but here you have entropy conservation, so the evolution is quite simple. And um, you begin uh, by by your universe by theorizing, and you don't care about what's happening here. Uh, it's quite common, it's, it's when you see really common for gravity, you know, is what is used, okay, and people usually use t rating as, as the maximum temperature of the universe, okay. In, in this basic picture, it is the case, but it's not the case usually. But people can say, I don't care about inflation, maybe I don't believe about inflation, I just believe on my uh, thermal universe, so my beginning of history is there. It's a point of view, and why not, okay. But if you want to refine a little bit uh, the story, it's not exactly true. Because your inflaton, of course, decay, okay? And while you decay, you produce radiation little by little. Because at the beginning, you don't have radiation, so it's very zero here. And the temperature increases and then decreases, and then is dominated by the radiation. So we have all this phase here where the universe is dominated by the inflaton. Okay, but still some presence of radiation is there. So the temperature you see go higher than the reading temperature because what is called reading temperature is when the universe begins to be dominated by the radiation. And you will see clearly that the temperature here can be what you call T max, if you want, can be larger than the reading temperature. And in this phase, you can produce a lot of things. You can produce dark matter, for instance, especially if you do freeze in because temperature is much larger than reading. It can be two, three, four, even five order of magnitude more and the T rating. And the evolution is not the same. So this, you can, you can have this power quite easily solving this set of equation. So here I have supposed uh, uh, um, an inflaton, which is a dust-like inflaton. You have a factor of three here. So as an exercise, you see there's a set of equation that every, I mean, student in master can solve. Okay, and from that, and you have to, of course, the Freeman equation for the Hubble constant to add to that. When you want to solve the three set of equations, these two plus the upper constant, you can find the evolution of temperature as a function of the scaling factor, which means the radius of universe. So 
this is good refinement, but it's a little bit more complex also because you, I have supposed in the in this phase that inflaton is dust uh, field, but there is no reason it's dust field. In fact, the inflaton potential, as you see, has a shape which can be phi power k. So if it is phi square, okay, is the oscillation is limited by m square phi square, you have a dust case, okay. If I took k equal two here, you recognize it's twelve divided by four, it's three, and I have a typical dust inflaton. But if my potential of, of inflation is k equal four, for instance, which is kind of radiation, if I put k equal four here, I have a four here because I have twenty-four divided by six, give me four, and I have an equation of state for the inflaton, uh, which is a radiation-like inflaton. So a lot of things change, in fact. So the, the evolution I showed you before here, which is A minus 3, 8, is valid only if my inflaton is a dust-like particle, but who knows? Nobody knows what's doing the inflaton. So to be more generic, in fact, my temperature dependence here uh, has a dependence on K, which is easy to solve, to find also, which is what we did in the last paper, but it's just a little exercise you can do also at home. And um, the dependence also change a lot, and you see the reading temperature begin to be much smaller than the one if it is the dust like in front. Okay, the slope I have taken here is for k equal four. Okay, so it's a minus three four here. And if you put k equal four, so you see the slope is much steeper in the case of a, of a radiation like in front, but in the case of dust like in front. So it's quite easy to understand. And also easy to understand why the slope of the of the temperature here is steeper when it is radiation dominated than when it is inflaton dominated. Because when it is inflaton dominated, you see the temperature want to decrease, but it doesn't decrease like a minus t minus one, which is the typical redshift, because the inflaton injects entropy inside the bath. Okay, so you, here you don't have entropy conservation because you have two systems. Of course, you have entropy conservation in the two system, but in, in the in the bath. The bath, in fact, receives energy from the inflaton. So the, the temperature wants to decrease like minus one, but it cannot because it receives entropy. So the slope, as you see here, is a little bit uh, less steep than the slope in the radiation dominated universe. You can explain the same thing here while the slope is stronger in the, in, the, um, in, the, in the case of an inflaton, which is a radiation like inflaton, because in fact, as it is a radiation like inflaton, the inflaton produces energy which is already redshifted. Uh, I don't know if you understand why, if it is to understand. If it is a dust like inflaton, if, if I take a power, full, a power of potential of phi to the square, it's a dust like inflaton will produce energy at a fixed amount, which is its mass divided by two. If my inflaton is a radiation like inflaton, if you want, it will produce energy which is already redshifted at the origin. So I have a double redshift if you want, which explains why the slope here. If I have k equal four, for instance, is steeper than the case of a dust like in flat on here, which is a minus three or three eight, okay, classical case. So it was just to show you. So I, I don't say uh, uh, which, which kind of in flat on you should you should take, of course, but just to say, say you that if you take into account the finite width story change, if you take into account uh, typical potential story change, but you can even refine a little bit more. In fact, because taking into account the phase where the universe, is, the bath is not yet thermal. Because what's happening? I take the example here of a dust like inflaton because it's easiest to understand. My inflaton will decay and it will produce photon of energy M5 on 2, more or less. Okay, it's not exactly that, okay, but let's think the inflaton as a massive particle of mass M5, okay. In fact, is is a mix between fine and Planck, but I go, don't go into details. But it will be monochromatic, right? Two energy, which is monochromatic, okay? Um, they will not discuss because if the production rate is larger than the interaction rate, in other words, if the interaction rate between the two photons is smaller than the Hubble constant, these two photons will never discuss and will never reach thermal bath. But after a while, these two photons will begin to lose energy by redshift. And the cross section of a long range direction is on one on E square, one on S, if you want. So if my energy decreases, my cross section increases, and there will be a time, a size in the universe, where my cross section, in fact, and sigma v, okay, which increase with, with A, okay, with the square root of A, will begin to be larger than my ample constant, and my thermal bath will begin to exist. So I have a region here of parameter space where my spectrum 
is not a thermal spectrum, but is many monochromatic spectrum with very energetic photon. So if you have production of that matter, for instance, which are very dependent on the energy of the, of the, of the photon, of the bath, if you want, you expect a big change in the production of dark matter in this region. So where the energy of the radiation is almost the mass of the inflaton divided by two, you can do the exercise for, for relative inflaton also. This is uh, Newton's stage, as, as I say, in the sense that this, this is, oh, you can always go to more refinement if you want and go to, to Einstein gravity equivalence, but this is uh, just to show you that, that the evolution of, of the temperature, so this time, of course, I don't talk about temperature, but about energy, because here, I don't have a definition of temperature, so I would talk about the mean energy, which is the temperature in the case of thermal bath. So you have an evolution which is very different, and of course, in each stage, you can produce dark matter, and depending on your dependence on your production rate on the, on the, on the energy, that is involved in the production rates, your result will be very, very different. So uh, this, this is what I say. This the thermalization here, uh, T equilibrium. So you begin to thermalize when your cross-section of interaction between you to you to photon, you to radiation is larger than the Hubble constant. Okay. So you have a phase here dominated by the inflaton, but not in thermal equilibrium. You have a phase here dominated by the inflaton, but in thermal equilibrium depending on your potential, and a phase here, which is dominated by the radiation. And of course, when you compute dark matter, you should compute the production rate on all these lines. So just to show you, to sketch you what's happening huh, when it is uh, non-thermal, the phase between, between the, 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 let's say, the inflation and the thermalization phase. So you see, see the time passing. So I produce a photon at m on 2, and some little second after, not second, of course, but some little time after, I have n phi on two, but my, my energy has been reshifted, reshifted at the time t a little bit on the left on the energy, okay? And then a little bit after, we shift it again, so power to third because it's limited by the inflaton, okay? It, in this case, just inflaton. You see that little by little, time after time, my, my distribution, which is picked on m phi on two, begins to be much more, more and more flat, okay? So this is what you see. This is my distribution here and how my distribution changed depending on my time, okay, I put some second here, so um, the longer is my time, so this, I reach more the thermal Hebrew. so I have a distribution here which is not thermal, of course, and after a time, my number of photons, which is as a small energy, begin, begin to be quite well populated, and the n sigma v, so at the same time, I populate more my, my low energy uh, photon, which is good because my cross section is long range, and my cross section also will increase because that temperature will decrease. So this time I begin to be thermal. Okay, this is sketched by this if you want, where you see that I go from a peak region and when the time goes little by little, I go to a flat and the flat comes from little by little in a thermal distribution. Okay, this is just a little zoom and I finish with the thermal distribution from here to here. So this is just a little zoom about, about the thermalization. So if I have the dark matter, because the idea was, of course, adding the dark matter, so I have to add one equation. So I have the classical equation for, for radiation and for the inflaton. I have the equation uh, for the Freeman equation, of course, for the bubble rate. And I have to add my equation for my dark matter with a rate with depend on the temperature. OK. So uh, my Hubble constant, OK, is a T4. Just to say so it's not classical T square. It's a T4 on M Planck square, not T square on M Planck in the case of a finite, 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 finite width, but it's not so important, these numbers. Uh, just to tell you that, okay, you have to solve uh, a Boltzmann equation, which is quite similar, but as you notice it, uh, the, what you call the yields is not the famous n on t to the cube uh, people are used in the case of, uh, of entropy conservation, because uh, a cube, in fact, is, is a t to the eight, and it's not a t to the cube, okay? I mean, T2 minus eight and not T2 minus one. So this is one, what we call the yields, which is uh, the common and the density per cubic frame, if you want, is on T2 eight, but except these little details, it's easy to solve. If you want to refine a little bit more, you also have to add the production of dark matter to the inflaton decay, because the inflaton also produces dark matter. Okay, so you have the possibility of decay into the dark matter. So you have also a branching ratio, which can appear here, and not only from thermal bath only. Just Go just zoom to be sure it's okay. Everybody hear me? Yes. So, so you you have five minutes left. Five minutes. Very good. Very good. Very good. All right. Very good. So um, 
once you do that, so this is a sketch that, that, that you have. And what we mainly show, it is that uh, depending on the dependence of the cross-section on the temperature, uh, you can have from 10% of magma top produced in this early stage to 100% if your cross-section is very dependent on the rating temperature. So this depends on your model, of course. So if you have supergravity, typically supergravity is this kind of cross-section, so half is produced yet. If you go to high scale, so this is to the six. So it depends if you have a plant reduced coupling, if you have heavy mediator like in SO10, for instance, if you have SO10 with, with, with a unified group, which is above rating temperature, you are in this framework here. So you have a lot of framework that, that, that can, uh, this kind of, uh, of study uh, can apply. I just give an example, which is a high scale supergravity, but honestly, there is uh, any models can, can be, you know, can play the game. In high scale supergravity, I have a reduction of coupling here because it's one implant. It is, in fact, the Golstino I wrote here. Stimu is a gravity node, so I took the Golstino part here, which is the immune implant, classical case for the Golstino, and the same on the Goldstone boson, except that it is not a crystal scale, of course, it's implant. The so Goldstino part here, the Goldstino coupling here, and you change a massive. For instance, Guino, it is a Guino, so you have Guion, Guion, Guino, Gravitino, Gravitino, it's very easy. This is the rate I really check, this is the rate of production, the anti mavi So you have a mass to the four, easy to understand why, the mass to four here, and then plant to the four, so it's easy to understand. Okay, so you understand quite well where the rate is coming from. And when you compute the recarbonance, you see you reach the EEV dark matter. So why I was talking about EEV dark matter is because of that. Easy to understand. You have a rate which is very suppressed in this case of model, for instance, which means small production, which means you need to go to heavy dark matter to, to counterbalance the small production rates. Okay? And also notice you have a strong dependence on the temperature, very strong dependence, many coming from the fact that the rate is very suppressed. Okay? You have strong dependence on rating temperature, so you have parameter space and uh, that, is, that is okay for you have good recarbonance and at the same time, rating temperature quite a uh, nice 10 to the 10 GV. You see you reach 10 to the 8 GV for the gravity mass. You can have also a two weeks scale gravity mass, but you need to go to lower rating temperature in this case. But just to show you that it's working, just to remind you, the classical uh, supergravity you see has a uh, uh, power and T rating. This is the density of the gravity node in the classical SUSY. As you notice it, so you begin by T reading. This was the first uh, uh, approximation I show you at the beginning. When you do this, you just have the temperature rating power one. Okay, but if you take all what I told you for the refinement, you have rating power, temperature power seven. So you see the big difference you have. If you take or not into account what is produced before the rating, and you make all the real refinements. So um, uh, the main point is that, is that be careful when you treat something which is above rating temperature, or if you have scale above rating temperature, always look what can happen in the early stage of universe because you have a lot of phenomena here, uh, which are sometimes even uh, contradictory and not easy to understand, but can change a lot of results. And of course, as I say, you can add the, 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 the curve, the inflaton for, to, to populate also the, uh, the gravity, you know, but it's not so important, it is a model, but you have also the production of dark matter with a branching ratio, which, which is zero, or not a branching ratio, which is 19, 17, 13. You can also produce dark matter in the early universe through the decay of the inflaton. Be careful, the inflaton always has a tendency to produce a lot of dark matter, in a sense. If this gives me the rating temperature, and I have a Yukawa of around 10 to minus five, which gives me a rating temperature around 10 to the 10 GV, if I, have, if I take the same kind of coupling here, I overpopulate my dark matter by more or less eight to nine order of magnitude for one GV dark matter. So an inflaton, if you take same kind of coupling to the dark matter and to the standard model, and if you suppose your rating is going from, coming from the decay of the inflaton, you overpopulate the dark matter by orders of orders of magnitude, okay? So the only way to not overpopulate is to forbid the direct coupling with the inflaton by loops, for instance, or to reduce it by loops. You see, branching ratio to have good recapitulant should be between 10 to minus 13 and 10 to minus 19. Okay, this is a generic case, not only from supergravity, but the coupling the dark matter to the inflaton is dangerous. So, okay, so other example, you can exchange a massive Higgs, for instance. Uh, you can exchange um, uh, a massive Z prime if you if you are on a on certain models. You can have coupling which give you also depends on temperature because is uh, is reduced by a mass scale, for instance, 
It can be different kind of reduction. Moduli portal, for instance, when you couple with a kinetic term, uh, can be a green chart mechanism also produce this kind of, of model. Uh, Chen Simon's term produces this kind of, of couplings, etc. Et et so you have a lot of, of models that can fit in the things. Huh? For instance, you can have a heavy Z prime exchange, you can exchange gravity, massive gravity node, Carl is a client mode, you say, and you can exchange the moduli fields. So all these models enter the same thing, category where for temperature, you see which is, uh, this is the temperature for temperature, which is quite high, uh, you have to be careful of what's happening in the early universe. So my conclusion, so I just saw that, that the wind paradigm, of course, we know is in question, uh, but alternative scenario can lead to heavy dark matter, especially if you look on models which have mass suppressions. Uh, SO10 with uh, intermediate mass can be the right 100 neutrino mass, as we show, for instance, in CISO mechanism. Any, any time you have a mass scale above rating temperature, so let's say in time you have a mass scale above 10 to 12 GV, above the inflaton mass for sure, you have this kind of phenomena which can happen because you will have steep over something divided by a mass rate. And every time you will, uh, you will make a peer a temperature at a large power, be careful because the effect of the universe can be very, very large. And when I say very large, it's orders of magnitude is that type of work. So, but of course, the problem is not independent on the initial condition. It can depend on, on, your, on your model in inflaton, it can depend on your coupling on the inflaton, a lot of things. So, it's not as beautiful as in the way, of course, or, uh, classical uh, freeze in. And of course, this kind of dark matter is observable. I don't have to talk about it because it's 30 minutes, but for this kind of EV, you can have EV neutrino. We show with, uh, with Lucien uh, and Mathias, Mathias Pierre and Lucien Hortier, we show that you can explain any type events, for instance, or even PV events with this kind of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of constructions. Thank you very much. Now I'll go back to Thank you very much. Good. So we have some time for questions. Very good. So I have a question. So you neglected the contribution from inflationary fluctuations. Can you tell yes. if and when this is good? Yeah. Yeah. Nice so the question is when, if and when it's okay to neglect the contribution from inflationary fluctuations? Well, it, it's, yeah, it, it depends a lot on the hypothesis you make on the, on the fluctuation of the, uh, yeah, inflationary fluctuations. Um, we didn't compare both. It, it's, it's our program. We want, we want to compare the production from this uh, setup with the perturbations. It, it's a good question. It's something we are looking on now. But that's true. Uh, other questions? Okay. If not, we can thank uh, both speakers and uh, we we'll reconvene on Thursday. You're welcome. Uh, by the way, if, uh, if you can send us the slides, we can put them online. Perfect. Yeah, I'll do that. <laughs>